Hi guys, it's Renisti. I'm here today to bring a one-of-a-kind FHM series documenting the rise of Turn Red, aka the Jamaican sensation, aka Barry McCockiner, as he goes from watching a bobsled documentary and loving winter sports randomly to trying to get a job in the NHL and to eventually get a Stanley Cup ring on his finger. To recap last episode, Barry actually joined the Toledo Walleye. He also accepted the Team Austria job, so we'll have two teams to manage at the exact same time. In addition, he also brought in three names to the Toledo Walleye organization, including Javin Moore, Zachary Waugh, and Roman Bazarin. Last episode, I did also say that we would simulate, or rather, play through the entire preseason. I then proceeded to look at our schedule off camera, and then I realized there's only one preseason game. So naturally, I have to give the people what they want, the preseason, and the first eight regular season games. Since there's 72 ECHL regular season games, I'm going to divide that up into nine different episodes, and we'll go from there. And any sort of international games, like a Deutschland Cup somehow, or Carlson Hockey Games, or the World Championships eventually, that's just an added bonus. With that being said, let's get back into things. Yeah, we, we've got all our contracts. Let's just simulate till August. Okay, so, surprise, surprise, another team wants Conlon Keenan, and I think Tulsa's already asked for him. This time they're offering us Tyler Poulsen. Do not even! No, 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 no! Goodbye. Okay, so we have no development report because, I mean, nothing's going on in July for most guys. For some reason, Roman Bazarin is a top-selling ECHL jersey right off the hop. People just love this guy. I mean, hey, I'm, I'm not complaining. More money for us, potentially. We'll see how that works. But, yeah, Roman Bazarin, Nugget Boy. Uh, shout out to this guy for throwing that suggestion in there. Nugget Boy is a hilarious nickname. So, from now on, he will now be Kirill... Nugget boy. So what do you want to be when you grow up? A what? A chicken nugget. So you want to be a chicken nugget. Zachary was well two of the three new signings getting uh, some jersey sales, which just shows that Barry's on to something here. He really is. A trade between Ottawa and Montreal. Wow. Ridley Gregg is a Montreal Canadian. How good is he actually at the NHL level at the moment? Barely NHL caliber, but... Still seems all right. Okay, David Drake. I think I've actually heard of this guy. So David Drake for Conlon Keenan. See, this, as much as I really want to give Conlon Keenan a chance, I feel like David Drake could actually be a good player for us. He's also six foot six, 194. He's a big f***er. A nine-rated old-school defenseman. The thing is, considering his age, his, uh, his stats will likely start to dip by the end of the season because around 29 or so is when players start to decrease in ability in this game that's what i've seemed to notice how good is he i mean it tends to be the stats here that decrease first you know speed acceleration maybe strength it's not often these things that regress quite as quickly we'll see but this is definitely a trade I am willing to consider. And actually, now I'm looking at it. Conlon Keenan, he's 27 years old, so he himself will regress soon. You know what? Conlon, I'm sorry, buddy. You're going to South Carolina. David Drake is now a member of the Toledo Walleye. Uh, number zero, obviously that will change. But welcome to the Walleye, David Drake. You have unanswered mail that needs a response. Let's see this. Probably just the number. Yeah. David Drake wants to wear number four. Currently worn by Thomas Farrell. Uh, suggested number five. Go for it. He seems fine with the number assigned to him. Good. The scouting reports don't tend to matter as much since... Yeah. So far, we're doing good. And money-wise, we're in the green again. Made uh, 8.7 revenue points by the looks of it. Nugget Boy is the highest-selling walleye jersey in September. Nice. And finally, a development report. Matt Anderson, professionalism plus one, temperament plus one for Farrell, Grease Sock, leadership plus one. I'm liking that, Chase. Mitch Lewandowski, determination plus one, Riley Sawchuk, bravery plus one. I'm liking these two. Thomas Farrell. Do, do any of these guys' roles actually improve based off of these skills, though? Not yet, but eventually we'll see some improvement because our team is rather young, and I'm sure that some guys will take leaps and strides this year. And I really hope that they all progress 
quickly. Sadly, you know, like I said, at the age of 29, Brandon Hawkins, his stamina has gone down by one, but he still has 12, so not that bad, really. The salary cap reminder, is our payroll over? Not even close. We are f just fine. Thank God. Detroit has sent down Lethman. Wow, okay. Okay, so the Toledo Walleye season ticket numbers have been announced. With the 2023-24 regular season rapidly approaching, the Toledo Walleye have announced their season ticket sales figures for this year. 5,400 season tickets have been sold so far for the 7,431 capacity Huntington Center. The team is reportedly pleased with the total. Very good. The seats will always be counted as sold during the season, so the team's game attendance for the season will always be at least 5,400. Perfect. Also, let's just notice how Colorado fleeced Ottawa. Jesus H. Christ. Yeah, that's a good trade. Ladies and gentlemen, it's match day. Oh, great. Zachary Wa ate too many goddamn donuts on vacation. Well, am I going to burn him publicly? No. Am I going to ignore the incident? No. But you're going to get a fucking slap on the wrist internally. That pisses me off, man. Do we still have all of our guys? Okay, good. All right, so heading into our first ever game in this series granted it is preseason but it's still our very first against the worst of railers these are our lines let's go and we win one nothing and we get a shutout win who's who scored the ot winner who scored the ot winner prapa Vesis, the captain we love to see it we love to see it all right now the preseason is technically over after a grueling single game of hockey we're gonna fast forward to opening night we're gonna take a look at the echl season preview are we in this no we're not <laughs> apparently idaho's the favorites now that we're uh headed towards opening night let's just fast forward to our first game all right so today we're playing against the kalamazoo wings so far no changes to our roster We'll keep the lines the same. They worked for us last game. I don't see why we can't give it a shot this game. Let's go. Boom. 4 nothing win. That's what I'm talking about. Who got the goals? Denomi with one. Hawkins with two. Look at this guy. Matt Anderson with another one. Really good game from the guys. Great way to start the season. Now let's fast forward to October 27th for our second game of the year. What? We got Joe Valeno? Holy fuck. Same with... Oh my god. We got Simon Edvinson and Emil Vero too. Steve Eisenman. God bless you. God bless you. Zachary Wa. Sorry, but uh, Joe Valeno's taking your place. We're gonna keep the roles as they are for the NHL payroll guys just because we don't want to mess up their development and also we don't want to piss off steve eiserman of all people so Joel valena will remain the grinder simon edvinson will remain a mobile defenseman despite him being better at a two-way and emil vero will remain a mobile defenseman which actually does appear to be his best position so good on eiser plan for recognizing that this now creates a couple holes in the lineup what the hell are we gonna do because uh, it looks like since we got that many players, some guys got sent down. Am I right in saying this? So yeah, Farrell got sent down. All right, these are what our lines are looking like now that we have three guys who are most likely going to be NHL or some who have already played in the NHL in our team. Let's go. Joe Valeno wants to wear number nine. He absolutely insists that he get his number. And he may become very upset if he doesn't. Let me just uh, give him that. I'm, I'm just kidding. Here, you can get number nine. Although it would have been very funny to see if he refused to play for us. Because God forbid he wears the number 69. Let's actually call up some guys though. Because, uh, you know, with this automatic sending down bullshit, I do not like it. I'm going to call up. I'm going to call up Thomas Farrell. He, uh, he did get a point in his first ECHL game. Or sorry. First ECHL game of the season, but even uh, Darian Pilon, you deserve to be at least looked at. Javin Moore, you're still there. Is anybody else still in semi-pro? Okay, no, we're all good. We're all here. 
So October 27th, we go. Training camp development report. Holy smokes, now we're talking. Look at this, Thomas Farrell. Take a bow, kid. My God. Carson Denomi as well. You're getting a lot better. Good on y'all. Javin Moore as well. Fighting plus two. Is this guy sneakily becoming a goon? I wouldn't hate that. Jake Willits. Uh, Roman Bazarin. God, I really hope that I get a chance to call him up. I'd feel like a major f***ing prick if I didn't. Very positive development report to get right out of camp. Very happy with this. Sadly, though, Brandon Cruz is day-to-day -day with, what is it? A facial cut. A nine-stitch facial cut. That's a fucking shaving cut in the NHL, but no. <laughs> oh, you can at least play. The, obviously, the orange plus sign means you can still play. I figure as much. It's a fucking shaving cut. Okay, so it looks like Simon Edmondson got called back up within a matter of days before even playing a game with the walleye. And instead, we got Albert Johansson. So we'll make do with what we have here. What actually are you best at? Barry, despite idolizing Steve Eisenman for the week that he's known sh about hockey, or a few months now in the game at least, he wants to uh, test what he can do with Eisenman's players. Yeah, mobile defenseman. Boom. Albert Johansson, mobile defenseman. So he got called back up to Grand Rapids. Are we uh, going to get any sort of email about that? Anywho. This is our lineup against the Fort Wayne Comets. I like the way our team looks. Let's hopefully get win number two of the season. Can't win them all. I mean, at least we got a point out of it. Let's simulate to November 3rd, which is our next game of the series. All right, so development report on top of training camp. So, Jesus. This Thomas Farrell guy is developing quickly. I love it. And Chase Greesock has now hit three-star ability. Phenomenal. And I'm sure he'll only get better from here. What? Christian Fisher, as in Arizona Coyote Christian Fisher? Is he on the walleye now? I am so confused. And Joe Valeno is now called back up. But even still, Christian Fisher is a great grinder. So, yeah, let's go. What is happening? Why? What? Okay, I don't know what's going on here. Maybe FHM can somehow fix this. I'm getting players released by my team, despite the fact that they were under contract with me. Matt Anderson, Mitch Lewandowski, Patrick McGrath, they were all already there. The only two players that you can see even in my first video or my second video that I manually went out of my way to release were these two guys, Sam Sternstein and Sam Craggs. But these three here, McGrath, the fucking goon, Lewandowski and Anderson, no, I didn't release them. So maybe this is some sort of glitch. If it is, I do hope that Out of the Park and Game 54 collectively can fix this because this could prove to be a massive problem in this series. I mean, even manager options, the only thing that my assistant has to do is renew staff contracts and they set up training. All of this stuff, even in challenge mode, it's locked to your GM, whatever the name is, Barry McCockiner, uh, Mike Oxlong, whatever it is. Like, you are locked into doing this. You can't even change it if you want to. So, what the f***? Why did my players get released? This is such bullshit. Even Anderson, he's on the Mississippi Seawolves now. Good for him, but what the f***? Like, he was my player. Patrick McGrath, I don't know who the hell did you this dirty. Oh, and of course, because we were released... I'm not interested in further negotiations. Yeah, I don't fucking blame you, dude. I don't fucking blame you. Oh my God, this is proving to be a chaotic start to the season, and we're only two fucking games in. Let's just send to the fucking third game. Okay, so yeah, same lines roughly against the Reading Royals. This one's our first game at home in the series, so let's just kill it. Yep, 3 2 win. Good job. Next up, we have the Indy Fuel. On the second half of a back-to-back -back at home as well. All right, we're going to keep the lines the same just because I don't like changing things up. If you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So let's just go into our second game against the Indy Fuel. And there you go, 5-2 win. Again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We can f***ing win with this team, and it's clearly visible here. All right, now let's sim to the fifth game of the series against the Fort Wayne Comets away. Oh, wait. Play game versus Germany. What tournament is this? I have figured out what the best possible roster for Austria 
looks to be. So let's take a look at the lines. All right, so after mishmashing once again with lines, this is what I believe will be the lineup to give us the best chance of winning the Deutschland Cup. Now let's get our first game underway against Germany, the hosts. And we pull off the upset. Wow! Barry just earned himself a ton of free schnitzel. Players need to be assigned numbers. Jared McIsaac, huh? Former Halifax Musa. Yeah, I'm gonna give him number 14. I believe that's the number he actually wore down there. Yeah, Jared McIsaac. Let's see if any other guys got uh, unwillingly released. Thank God, no. But still, it'd be pretty scummy if that's what was the case. Yeah, and Jared McIsaac, he was really good on Halifax. I got to see him a couple times playing against uh, Blainville when I was younger. The lines are the same. McIsaac will just take Vero's place as the third pair left-hand defenseman. Let's go and uh, try and actually win our first game against Fort Wayne because they beat us the first time around. Revenge is a dish best served cold in a 4-2 win. Oh, and the hockey gods love us. We are going to play our next game against Denmark in the Deutschland Cup. And we pull off another upset. Oh my God, Barry. Barry McCockiner, ladies and gentlemen. All right, once again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Let's see how our third game of the season against the Comets goes. Another win. If it ain't broke, don't f***ing fix it. This team is good. I love it. Let's take a look at our team harmony. Oh, it's harmonious. Currently unhappy. Zachary Wa. Why? New team isolated out of shape. Then eat a f***ing salad, bro. The third problem can be fixed. The second one I can try and help with a bit more, but come on. The third one is, uh, is completely on you, buddy. I can't force you to go to the f***ing gym. Let's see. This game's at home. And we lose. Our first regulation loss of the season, it took seven games. You know what? Could be a lot worse. And our final game in the Deutschland Cup against Slovakia. Let's see how this goes. Oh, oh no. We have an injury. Brian Lebler. With Lebler being out, I have to mess with the lines a bit, but hopefully this team can get over the hump over Slovakia. This would be a, another massive upset if we pull off the win. And we do. Oh my God, we won the Deutschland Cup. Barry's first ever international tournament he sweeps the fucking thing with no losses this mother is going to be a headline hero in austria and jared McIsaac is injured womp womp let's see we'll give riley mccourt some playing time because lord knows beraldo probably got oh he's a nine rated russian defenseman now that's pretty good oh my god six weeks what did what happened to him he was hurt while being hit by a shot afterward he expressed he'd be able to fracture jaw oi 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 we'll put you on the injury list buddy my goodness all right now we're playing the wheeling nailers i believe they're pittsburgh's affiliate we'll take a look at how this game goes christian fisher's still there and i'm sure he's tearing it up oh second loss in a row that's not great wheeling scored five in the third period yeah that's not great up oh, and christian fisher's injured love it gotta love it all right so now that christian fisher's gone and darian pilon our 13 or 11th forward really is now able to crack himself into the lineup this is where our lines will be looking like heading into next episode where we play our first game against the kalamazoo wings at home that's it that's all guys thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed this video Please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.